So, uh, good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Antoine Trantan. Uh, I'm a postdoctoral researcher at uh, Louisiana State University. And more precisely, I work in the Center for Computation and Technology and in uh, Interstellar Group. So, the topic of my talk today will be uh, explaining how we can uh, use <coughs> the core array semantics from Fortran language uh, to uh, and bring them to C++. And then I will start by just uh, presenting the context. So uh, the actual issues that comes from the, the hardware is the following ones. First, data access are more costly than data processing. When I say more costly, it's in time, it's in terms of execution time. Uh, the second uh, issue is that uh, we have more and more disjoint memories for the reason to increase the overall band bandwidth of a machine. And the next, one, the next issue is we have more and more complex uh, parallel architectures that comprises uh, CPUs who are uh, uh, gathered with uh, GPUs. And the reason is we have to uh, multiply the, num the, the number of cores to have more parallelism and then increase the peak performance of the machine. So, to um, update uh, this, um, the software to uh, take account these issues, we have first what we call single programming multiple data. So single programming multiple data, it's simple. It's just we have a program that is uh, replicated uh, in multiple uh, processors. That means that each processor will be executed the same code, but optionally can touch different data. So uh, why we can gain some data locality using single programming multiple data? Because uh, using this uh, programming model, we, we can control uh, the locality of the data uh, we are touching. So I know uh, I think you know what uh, what the issue are coming from the NUMA architectures. No. So NUMA architectures is a kind of logic ch uh, system with shared memory, but it's not uh, in the hardware point of view. The memory um, is not shared. It's split into multiple memories. So uh, if uh, CPU is um, uh, allocating um, some data and initializes it, the um, default policy will say that uh, this uh, data will be uh, located in the memory bank, which is the nearest to the CPU that does this operation. So if another CPU wants to touch this, uh, this particular data in a specific address, there are a NUMA miss. That means that this data should be, uh, uh, should be transferred from the first memory bank to the other one. Second, uh, to manage the disjoint memories, we have to, uh, to give a mean to access to whatever uh, data in whatever uh, locality from whatever locality. So for doing this, we have uh, the partition global address space that allows some particular data to have a unique identifier that allows any CPUs to, uh, to access in read, in read or write. So the next, the last solution to um, uh, solve the problem of more complex architectures is to use ad asynchronous programming. So asynchronous programming is uh, in the standard, for example, uh, using futures, async, and uh, everything like that. 
and it allows to have more flexibility about load balancing. So, in, for example, we know that for certain computation, GPUs are faster than CPUs. So using asynchronous programming, it's more easier to dispatch more computation, for example, to GPU and less computation for less uh, uh, fast cores. So uh, the main topic of uh, this presentation is to, uh, to, to uh, speak about core arrays. So what are core arrays and why are they important? Core arrays is an extension, extension introduced by Numrich and, and Read, and it is a simple, strict implementation of the what we call the Pegas model, so the partition global address space model. I will show you some illustration to explain uh, what is the Pegas model. And an important thing about Core Arrays is that it is a part of the actual Fortran standard. So to make parallel computation, this is the default, uh, 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 the default um, uh, means to, um, in Fortran to make parallel computation. So what is the Pegas model? We have multiple processors with uh, which um, um, possesses uh, a memory. A part of their memories is uh, dedicated for a global address space. That means that each data in this global address space will uh, have um, a unique identifier that allows any CPUs to to ac uh, access from any CPUs. So, f if we create in a core array function, the, f the fact is uh, when uh, the program uh, starts, the program is replicated to each of the localities. The, the code that is replicated is called an image in uh, core array function. So an image, it's a replication of a program. So if in the Fortran program we instantiate an array, this array is replicated in each locality because each locality is running the same code. So here uh, I'm creating an array of three elements, three scalar elements. To access a particular element of uh, this array, we use uh, the usual subscript of uh, arrays by using the parenthesis operator. So if in the code I'm, I'm saying A parenthesis 1, each of the image will access at the same time uh, to its proper uh, uh, first element. So the extension uh, with core array is that. You can precise another size just after the local size uh, between uh, square bracket. And this uh, size can be multidimensional. In this example, what is the dimension of uh, this uh, special size? how many uh, size you have in the square bracket. There is one, in fact. But, there, but it is defined as star. Star means that the size defined for this only dimension will be the number of actual localities. So it's uh, implicitly uh, n in this example, uh, bigger n. So when you want to access <coughs> to um, an array in a particular locality, you use, as, we, as you used uh, subscript with parentheses, you use square bracket uh, subscript. And this is called cos subscript. So if, uh, just uh, for an example, if I want to access this element, uh, where will be where it will be located? So it's the scalar element two, but at the co-index n. So 
coindex n is in this locality, we are touching this array, specific array, and the two, sc the scalar element two. So why we use coarray? <coughs> First, it improves data locality in distributed applications because it's, uh, it integrates uh, exactly the Pegas model. Second, uh, it, is, it is easier to uh, access to remote reference because uh, we just use a uh, subscript uh, between a square br uh, bracket. And the last one, the most important one, I think, is it is widely accepted by the Fortran community. So our approach is the following one. We want to enable coarray semantics uh, by using a C++ library approach to uh, manage the parallelism, we need a C++ runtime. So the runtime we use in this um, in this library is HPX, <coughs> and the 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 the, the final approach the approach is to include new features that is available uh, from C++ standard 11 and 14. And it allows to, 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 to easier the design of the API. So what is HPX? HPX is a runtime that allows uh, uh, us to do local parallelism via uh, tasks and threads, but also the distributed parallelism. So in uh, HPX, we are aware that um, in a locality we can have different type of cores, so CPUs, GPUs, in a locality. We have also what we call the parcel port. So parcel port is a system, a runtime system, that uh, deals with what we call parcels. So parcels in HPX is a kind of active message. The active message can be uh, is used to allow remote uh, task uh, invocation. For example, this locality can invoke a task to be run in this locality. And uh, parcels allows us to when um, um, a task is recreated in a specific locality to uh, gather back to the caller some data, some result data. So uh, implicitly we use, uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking about futures because futures in HPX has been extended for a distributed uh, uh, task uh, application. So in one locality, we can uh, invoke uh, a, a, big a big number of threads. This thread has, uh, are defined as lightweight. That means that when you invoke a thread, it is not a thread that you invoke, uh, but a task, in fact. And it can be, uh, th this task can be run in cores or in GPU. Another functionality of uh, HPX, which is uh, really interesting, is the fact that we can uh, create objects in uh, remote localities. How we do that? <coughs> uh, when we create an object, a component is created in the locality where the caller wants the object to be allocated, and a client object is created uh, in uh, local. So client object allows whatever locality to access a specific uh, object, a unique object, identified, unique, ide uniquely identified object in a certain locality. So now I will speak much 
uh, more about how we implement core arrays in C++. So we, are, we have here uh, an instantiation of a core array. That means a, a usual array that is instantiated with this special uh, size. So if I have four localities, how many elements uh, I have here? So first, we can say that we have two different sizes. So it's a 2D core array. Then the, first, the size of the first dimension is 10. Star is implicitly equal to 4 because I say it, there is four localities. So there, there are, in total, 40 uh, elements that, is, that are dispatched among localities, among the four localities. So to, uh, to um, <coughs> make this happen in C++, we need to use um, an, ex an external ob uh, class object, which we call SPMD block. So the, uh, to make this simple, a SPMD block is a kind of object that uh, contains some information about the participating uh, processors in uh, the, proce the processors that will participate in the computation. So uh, I say that we have a two-dimension uh, core array. So that's why we have a template parameter uh, equal to two. So two, it's not a size, it's just the dimension of our core array. The first parameter that is given to the constructor is the SPMD block, because we are, we, we are constructing a new core array. So we need uh, to gather this inform uh, the information that the block uh, processes. A tag. Uh, that is um, resumed for this string that allows us to uh, uh, that allows the particip participating processors to uh, to um, uh, synchronize because uh, each uh, participating processors will be allocated some data and the dimension the co-dimension is uh, defined by an initial laser list. So the star is replaced by uh, underscore. And we have a last argument that say uh, how many elements we have in a co-index element. Here, it is uh, implicitly equal to one, because uh, if you want to create a local array, you should um, uh, use the parentheses to define the size. But in C++, we explicitly say <coughs> each co-index element is a partition of size 1. So now <coughs> uh, I'm showing you the, an example of uh, C++ core array code. We have a SPMD block here. We create a core array of dimension 1. The size of this, di this dimension is the number of uh, uh, participating processors. And uh, each coindex element is of size 1. So uh, in gray, uh, this is the element that is existing in a core array. The only difference is we implement it as a method uh, that is um, uh, that, that, that is from uh, the class SPMD block. So this part of code will be executed by the image zero. That means that every image will execute this, but uh, uh, the image two and until n will just uh, go over this, uh, this branch. But the, the locality zero will execute this. So we, we get a data from the standard stream. 
and we use a method named dot data. So in uh, Fortran, there's nothing. It's just Z. That means that it is uh, the partition that the, the actual image processes. But what we want is to to keep this dimensionality of um, of the core array. So what we say is, I want the co-index underscore, and the underscore means it's me. If uh, it's uh, the image zero, underscore means zero. Z dot data, uh, Z dot data will return a real reference to a vector, a STD vector. So we have here a real uh, reference. Now, <coughs> when we um, have written this, uh, this uh, data that uh, has been given from the standard stream, uh, the image zero will, uh, in a loop, uh, transfer this uh, data to the other image. So an important operation is the operator equal. What does it mean? It means that the processor of the R, um, R value will actually uh, um, do the operation. For the other image, it will be considered as a dummy. Okay, it will be considered as a dummy uh, operation. So only one here because we define uh, we define we we say that this code will be executed by only image zero will be executed by the uh, the processor zero. And here you have the operator parentheses. It is similar to what data does, but parentheses in give you, in fact, a proxy. So when the proxy is used with the operator equal, it means that we will do a put operation. That means a transfer f of data from a locality to another one. And then at the end, when the, dat the data owned by the image zero is put it to all the other localities. We, we put a barrier. So it is a method uh, uh, owned by the SPMD block object. And we give, we give it a tag. So this tag is similar to this one because when you instantiate a barrier, you create a new object in uh, our system. So we need uh, something that allows the different participating processors to synchronize. So uh, uh, the, in Fortran, this barrier is, co is named syncall, but we name it barrier sync. The reason is we, in uh, an asynchronous programming, we don't like uh, blocking operations. And what we want is, for example, to create a future that is representing this blocking operation so that we can uh, use a continuation uh, passing style programming to do uh, the remaining operations. So why not just have that whole block and lambda? But yeah, the rest of uh, the operation, <coughs> if, we, if we want to be uh, scheduled after that barrier uh, resolved, we have to use lambda. So uh, the difference here is uh, if you want a blocking operation, it will be barrier sync. If you want a barrier that returns a future, just use barrier. Now, uh, here we present how we can uh, do some kind of range operations. So in a core array uh, Fortran, to do some range operation, you use the usual uh, range in uh, 
in um, in um, subscript, but we do not have this one in uh, in uh, C plus plus. In C plus plus, we have iterators. So to make some range operations, a core array can um, uh, as a method begin end to allow the user to um, traverse all the element, uh, all the co-index element. So here, I want to write um, to initialize each co-index element by using the dereference operator, and then I create. Uh, this uh, initialization is done by only one processor by because here we have the, op the equal operator so it's a put operation then we create a barrier and we have something that is interesting is th this is uh, an, ob an object that creates a, a view a local view of our actual core array the local view allows us to filter only the elements that uh, the actual image processes, the ac actual uh, processor. So this code is not contained inside uh, the, if the if statement. That means that each locality will execute this one. But the local elements uh, that we result from this operation will not be the same. That means because uh, here each processor will uh, do the operation for the partition it possesses. So it's pure local operation and then we can use here the dereference operation of the iterator uh, that was written by the, the view and returns here a, a true reference, true local reference, which is a vector of double. A good things that come from the C++ uh, 11 is we have the range-based for loop and it makes the code much clearer. Here we have a core array and we implicitly dereference uh, the, um, the iterator they're referencing the iterator directly f from the, uh, the that has been returned from the core array will return you a proxy. So it's not a reference, it's a proxy. And when you do a proxy, the equal operation with the proxy, it's a put operation. When you use the local view, we have a reference to a local vector. So how we implemented it in uh, HPX. A core array is a simple multidimensional view of a distributed vector. A distributed vector is a kind of extension of a usual vector. You have here the size, the value, uh, the initialization value, and an object that is called layout. The layout allows the user to specify in which locality uh, the different partition of the distributed vector will be located. So uh, I, co I, I was, I, I talked to you about uh, the image, that means a portion of code that will be replicated in multiple processors, and we need something that uh, create uh, a, a, a kind of SPMD region. So for those who, who is familiar with uh, OMP parallel, uh, OMP, OpenMP, it's uh, uh, equivalent of OMP parallel. So how we do this? We create, we use uh, the default uh, uh, functions that allows us to, to gather the different locality that is uh, uh, actually run, that are actually running and we, we call a function named define SPMD block with a first argument, which is a vector of this different locality, and a function. So the function is wrapped into uh, a wrapper object, and, the, and 
this wrapper is called an action. So now, uh, in terms of performance evaluation, we just implement the matrix transpose. Uh, so the layout is different to the usual ones. That means that the matrix is uh, um, is um, uh, <coughs> uh, splitted into multiple square block. And to do the, ac the actual transpose operation, you have to transpose uh, the matrix by block, put a barrier, and then uh, do an in-place transpose for each uh, tile. And for doing this, it's a local operation, so we, we use uh, the, this local view. So here is the performance we obtain. So we, we do, do the benchmark in uh, a machine with two NUMA nodes uh, containing each eight cores. And using just our core array implementation, we are there. And the OpenMP uh, reference benchmark is uh, better than us. The fact is uh, our transpose operation uh, count two step of copy because we, are, we have the copy, the transpose by block, and then the in-place transpose. And uh, by uh, using, uh, but op uh, the OpenMP benchmark is, has been run with the default layout, which is uh, the LAPAC layout, where the matrix is uh, stored contiguously in the memory. When we use, uh, when we, um, we optimize by end by using HPX functionality, in, in uh, partic particularly using the function parallel for which, the performance is, uh, is, uh, is really good. First, because the layout is different. We are, the, okay, we, the tile are stored contiguously, uh, tiles are stored contiguously, and there are only one copy step, as uh, like OpenMP. So we did uh, 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 additional optimization in uh, our core array. So uh, just to uh, precise, the, this line has been run when, uh, so we have the number of cores, we invoke one image per course. So to um, optimize a little bit, we decide to uh, invoke only one image. And the tile, the different partition will be located. The different co-index element will be located in the same uh, locality. And by doing this and uh, parallelizing this two loop, because here we have a loop that can potentially use the local parallelism <coughs> using task and thread, and the other one here, we have a loop that can be potentially parallelized. We can reach uh, better performance than OpenMP. So here the main reason is the layout is different. The second uh, benchmark is sparse matrix vector multiplication. So to do this, we have, um, uh, we have de defined uh, a struct with uh, different uh, uh, vectors because uh, a sparse matrix is, uh, is not just one vector, but three vectors, a vector of index, a vector that contains the non-zero uh, values, and we have these two, these two vectors, begin size, which allows us to make uh, easier operation with chunk size and uh, offsets. So, <coughs> uh, this uh, sparse matrix vector multiplication has been done by just uh, splitting the output vector, but the sparse matrix vector and uh, uh, the operand vector has been replicated in each image. So here is the performance we obtained. And there's uh, a, a point I, I have to precise. 
when you do the actual sparse matrix uh, vector multiplication, you have to put a barrier at the end of the operation. But uh, for our benchmark, we decide to remove this barrier and just to put the, this barrier at each k iteration of the test loop. So uh, it allows us to uh, to have benchmark where uh, image doesn't synchronize uh, with uh, other image uh, each time. It's only each k iterations of the test loop. And then by using just uh, and uh, written uh, code with HPX, we can achieve uh, more uh, performance than the, um, the available bandwidth here. So uh, the available bandwidth is a limit uh, that is uh, used for, um, uh, for uh, memory bound applications. So by using just uh, the Coaway implementation, we are better than uh, MKL. And we reach almost the available bandwidth by <coughs> using uh, local parallelism, we can reach almost the same performance as a uh, under-optimized application. So, uh, thanks for your attention. If you have any questions.